Hello and welcome to the This Works For Me virtual summit. I'm your host, Firmfe Watson. I am the director of the Faculty Development Center at Murray State University. If you are looking for strategies to increase engagement in synchronous class meetings, then you are in the right place because our guest today, Dr. Erica Hollis, will be providing us with some practical strategies to do so. Dr. Hollis, welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad to have you here with us today. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, where you're from, and what you do? Sure. So um, as she said, I'm Dr. Erica Hollis. I am the Associate Dean of Online Assessment and Faculty Development at Regis College located in Weston, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. I have been um, in the instructional design technology field for over 15 years, both in corporate and in academia. I am originally from Monroe, Georgia, which is right outside of Athens where the University of Georgia is. Go dogs! Um, and in my current role, I support faculty development and manage um, online assessments for all of our online um, graduate programs. So um, pretty much I do faculty, lead faculty development efforts for um, our online faculty population. Right now, that's a little over 100 faculty, both full-time and adjunct. Wow. You have a wealth of experience, and I'm just looking forward to this conversation today. And the topic of our conversation is increasing engagement in synchronous class meetings. What got you interested in this topic? So um, in my lifetime, I've worn many hats. Um, three of them are germane to our talk today, and I kind of want to speak to them a little bit. Mm -hmm. Learner, student and instructional designer. So when I was working on my master's, I was exposed to hybrid and online courses. Some of those courses had synchronous video class meetings, which means we're in Zoom or in Adobe Connect all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that in some of the meetings as a student, I absolutely dreaded them because the professor literally talked from anywhere from one to three hours, mm -hmm. sometimes with the PowerPoint and sometimes without a PowerPoint, but a lot of talking. And the problem with this model is that it really lacked active learning and student engagement. Um, in the reality, in hindsight, the professor was simply doing the same thing that he or she would do in the face-to-face -face classroom, which wasn't great instructionally either, but um, it really lacked student engagement. Mm -hmm. So what I decided to do as part of my role in instructional designer and as a faculty member um, when my ID hat is on, when I'm working with faculty, I really work with them to create an engaging online experience using collaborative tools. Mm -hmm. So learners don't experience death by PowerPoint is what I call it in an online class meeting. So I've worked with them to have them go back to their objectives and really think about what do the learners need to be able to do mm -hmm. and how will you as the instructor know their successful. Mm -hmm. And then we think about how to leverage that in an online environment. And I also present them with the framework to help them understand the type, why this type of educational experience is important. So if I'm working with a group of faculty, I actually do this in a workshop where they're the students. And we have a synchronous um, meeting, kind of like what we're doing right now, and mm -hmm. we have a workshop together. But in the whole point to the to the solution is, is to have more authentic synchronous class meetings and not death by PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Great, so, so what are some strategies that one might use to increase engagement in the synchronous class meeting? So there are three main strategies that I will have you all consider. The first one is alignment with the objectives or the outcomes. Mm -hmm. And the second one is use of technologies and cloud-based tools. Mm -hmm. And then the third one is setting expectations so that everyone is clear on what the expectations are in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned the importance of aligning mm -hmm. with the objectives or the outcome. How important is that? Um, it's really critical. So whatever we're doing in this synchronous classroom environment, we need to make sure that it's either connected to a modular level objective, a weekly objective, or overall course level objective. Mm -hmm. So having that connection and being able to draw a clear distinction between what we're having the students do is very important. Mm -hmm. 
So it's good that you mentioned that first because the second strategy is use of certain technology tools, right? But you made sure that the pedagogy preceded the technology. So, always, yeah. always. Yeah, so, so thanks for reminding us of that. So what are some technologies that you use to increase engagement? So obviously there is a cloud-based um, use of tools. Mm -hmm. that I definitely want to show you an example, but also keep in mind that um, right now when I'm talking about synchronous classroom environments, I'm talking about a platform, a video platform such as Zoom or Adobe Connect that has the ability to do breakout rooms mm -hmm. and also has the ability to do polling features. Mm -hmm. But what I would like to do is to show you um, when I'm talking about cloud-based tools, mm -hmm. I'm talking about either Microsoft 365 or I'm talking about Google Drive, and they have documents, spreadsheets, presentations. And what I would like to do, and hopefully this share works well, is share with you an example. Yeah, that would be great. Excellent. Yes, so, fun mm -hmm. so what we have here is when I'm working with the students, I have a, a document, an agenda for them, and they have access to it. Mm -hmm. And we talk about what the ground rules are. I'm going to um, circle back to those in just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. But in this document, um, they're able to see what the community, what their task activity is. I put all the tasks in orange boxes. So their first task here is to review a website. And what they're reviewing is the community of inquiry framework. And then the actual task is I break them out in Zoom into these small groups and they're to discuss their element and then open up an actual shared worksheet, mm -hmm. which looks like this. Mm -hmm. um, and whichever group has social presence, they type in their information there. Which group has um, cognitive presence, they type in their information there. Mm -hmm. And so what this allows is the students to really be in their small groups and being really engaged in, in the content. Yeah, I like that. What I like about this strategy is that you're not just putting them in the breakout rooms. From time to time, we hear about the dreaded Zoom breakout rooms. <laughs> right. But now you're not just putting them in the breakout room. You have a plan. Exactly. And the reason why that's so important is, um, which ties back to the, to the, to the point about setting expectations mm -hmm. is to make sure that we're all on the same page, right? Mm -hmm. So when I talk about expectations, I think of them and I frame them in terms of rules of engagement. Mm -hmm. So the first rule is we decide, is this course, this class meeting gonna be recorded? If so, we need to let people know, does that make sense for your audience? Is it legal in your state? Do you have to get permission from everyone? And also mm -hmm. the muting. Um, so should everyone be on mute? Um, those types of things. And also should everyone be on video? So if I'm having a three hour graduate course um, from nine to 12 on a Saturday and someone is still eating their breakfast, do I want to really see them eating their breakfast or is it okay for them to, you know, be off camera? So that's definitely one aspect. And then the other aspect is thinking about the interaction part. Mm -hmm. So there's the learner to learner then there's the learner to instructor and also the learner to content. Mm -hmm. So what is it that we're going to be focusing on in this class meeting and where are you and what are the expectations? And I would, um, uh, one category that people forget is the instructor to student. Oh. So we know instructor to content, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's learner to content. We know that, right? They need to read and do something but what are the students' expectation of me? And one of them, one time when I did this in the class, it was like not to be bored to death. So that's a legitimate expectation, right? And one of my expectations for them was to actually do the work and the readings that I assign. Mm -hmm. And what that does is you can call people out when they're not meeting the classroom expectations, but they also know what's expected of them in these environments. Mm -hmm. Wow. So this is interesting. How did you come up with this? Is this a framework that, that's, that this is based on or just your experience of figuring things out or a combination? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So that's a really good question. And this um, framework is definitely um, based in community of inquiry. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a theoretical framework that really um, has a process for deep and meaningful, like collaborative constructivist mm -hmm. um, learning experience. And that's what I'm hoping to achieve by having these engaging classroom meetings. So there are three um, real tenets to it. Um, there's a social presence, mm -hmm. you know, there's a social aspect to the educational experience and also a cognitive presence in a teaching presence. Mm -hmm. And what the community of inquiry really does is it kind kinds of, um, if you're looking at a Venn diagram, it shows where these things should be overlapping. And that's where we want to be in that sweet spot to make sure we're having the best experience for the students. Mm -hmm. Well, how have students responded to your use of these strategies? Um, some, right out the gate, sometimes students love it. They're like, oh, this is going to be a, a great class. Some of them are very hesitant at first until they really get into the flow and know what's expected of them, you know, to go back and forth between Zoom and a, a Google Doc, you know, some of them, the technology skills vary. So until they're comfortable with it, um, it can be a bit slow, but once they get into it, um, it's really, I've seen uh, some amazing students create some amazing things. And that brings it um, one point that is really critical to set the clear expectations. Like this will not be a sit and get type of lecture. This is a very active learning environment. So you need to be ready for that. Um, overall, in the course evaluations that I've received when I've used this type of approach have been very positive. And also some feedback that I've gotten from other faculty who have implemented some of these approaches as well. Mm -hmm. Um, what it really does is provide an uh, opportunity for more student voice in the learning experience. So we're shifting, you know, from the instructor to learner to more learner to learner and more learner to content mm -hmm. and just more overall active learning. Yeah. So you mentioned some of the benefits and even your positive evaluation. It seems as if there might not be any challenges to this, these strategies, right? <laughs> There are always challenges um, with any instructional strategy. And I would say that um, one of the key challenges is shifting the faculty and the students' mindset to this type of approach. Like I mentioned before, it's not really a sit and get, it's more like a think, pair, share, more of a constructivist approach. And if students really aren't used to that, it can present um, a challenge. And if faculty aren't used to using that type of approach too, it can be, um, it can take your take a minute to wrap your brain around it. Mm. So if one is interested in exploring this strategy further, do you have any resources that you'd like to recommend? For our yes. Mm -hmm. I definitely have some resources. So you should definitely, um, on the spreadsheet that's included, I've linked to this agenda that I was showing earlier. Mm -hmm. and also um, a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. so I'm not sure, I can share. Really yeah, you, you may go ahead, yeah. So I'm going to share um, this mm -hmm. agenda okay. and it has a link to the ground rules expectation spreadsheet mm -hmm. and also the, um, this is a link to the community of inquiry framework. Yeah. And then here is a link to the spreadsheet for the students to do their work. And um, there are also some resources on this agenda to polling. Um, there's ways to do quick and dirty polling in Zoom. Yeah. Um, some other information there, but also there is um, a video from one of my colleagues at the University of Kentucky that talks about how he uses this approach in an education law class. So it links out to his synchronous Zoom meeting and also um, the agenda that he uses for that, for that class. So I hope that will be helpful for everyone. Yeah, these seems like really helpful resources. Viewers, I will be linking to those resources in the video description below. So please be sure to check them out and share them with others. So Dr. Hollis, could you leave our viewers with an encouragement or call to action? 
Yes, I would definitely say start small. Um, decide to do one collaborative activity that obviously aligns with your objectives. Mm -hmm. But think about um, what you can do in one of your synchronous classroom meetings mm -hmm. that makes the most sense for your target audience and your group. And if you are uncomfortable trying this in a classroom um, that you're teaching first, or if you're not teaching this semester, you can try a similar approach in a meeting with your colleagues mm -hmm. and have them do an interactive um, type of meeting where they're collaborating in a document as far as brainstorming or things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I really want to challenge you and urge you to think about the three tenets of the community of inquiry framework when you are designing your instructional activities. So that's social, teaching, and cognitive in all of your educational experience. So if you haven't heard of that framework, please check it out. Yes. And again, I'll be linking to those resources that Dr. Hollis mentioned in the video description below. Dr. Hollis, you have mentioned some really practical strategies with us today and given us some great resources. Thank you very much. You are welcome. It was a pleasure to be here. Yes. So viewers, I encourage you to share this conversation with others and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode of this virtual summit. See you soon.